slow poker. I have a career and a family, but also play poker, which doesn't leave me much time. So let's get to it. It's ladies night and after the hijack raises to 15, I bump it up to 40 from the small blind and he calls. After a feminist flop, I bet 60, which is too high, but really doesn't matter given the stack to pot ratio. If it's a safe turn, all the chips are going in anyway. And that deuce fits the bill. I'm all in. All in. I assume he had ace jack and politely ask if he'll confirm for the vlog. He declines, which is his prerogative, but by rule it does mean I get to decide his whole cards. Wait, he at Pikachu Park Place offsuit? Oh, I was way behind on that flop. This game is brutal. I've got JJ Watt on the hijack, raise over a limp to 17, and get calls from the button and limper. Given my sterling record with jacks, I figure this can only go well. The flop is an ugly one for JJ, and facing a check, I consider betting my range, but check, and the button checks behind. The turn's a good one, and the low jack limper leads for 25. I almost flat call, but pre-flop limp callers tend to donk lead with nothing but a draw, so I re-raise to 70. After a button snap fold, the low jack ponders a bit, and then delivers some news. I'm all in. And now I regret re-raising, as this feels less like nothing and more like everything. If he's holding what he's repping, then I have nowhere near the pot odds to call this off. And yet I can't help but think back on my sins. So I tell JJ I'm putting him on injured reserve. That's right. I, slow poker, put a hex on JJ Watt. And while I do stand by my assertion that much like Pocket Jacks, JJ Watt's both really good and really good at losing, I also feel profound remorse for tearing his labrum. So despite the Grammy-nominated song playing in my head, it's probably the nuts. And despite all the rational mathematical reasons to fold, JJ, this is for you. Cool. And yes, I do feel guilty for getting it in bad and cleaning out the low jack, but technically it's not my fault, given JJ was pretty unambiguous about the outcome. All I know is, to mess with me, you got problems. That's all I know. What's your favorite sandwich? Big Blind Special. And now, the return of the Slow Poker miniseries. I didn't ask for this. A bunch of limpers make me play an unsightly 9-7 offsuit. The flop looks great, and Small Blind leads for 12. I call, and the hijack calls, and the cutoff calls. I quickly verify the quantity of 9s in a deck of cards. Still 4? Yeah, still 4. The turn brings the obvious gut shot straight that anyone can easily have, and everyone checks. The river is a welcome sight, and Small Blind says, oh you think that's a welcome sight? Here's 75 bucks. I debate flatting in case the hijack or cutoff might make a light call, but decide they probably don't have much, and I'd rather grab the rest of Small Blind's stack. Morning. Morning. It was your mistake, not mine. A bunch of limpers make me play an unremarkable ace-nine offsuit. The flop is half decent, and everyone checks. The turn is full decent, and after small blind checks, I figure someone has to have some piece of this board, and there aren't nearly enough chips in this pot, so I bet five and get two calls. The river changes nothing. Small blind checks, I bet fifteen, under the gun snap folds, and now it's back to the small blind, but he doesn't call. He min raises to thirty. Now I find myself in kind of a fascinating spot, because I've got what we in the industry call the stone cold nuts. Who leaks peanuts in the freezer? Kids! And if he's raising me, then he has to have a boat. But the question is, which boat? Obviously with the frozen peanuts, I'm gonna re-raise, but how much do I re-raise? If I shove, I'd hate to see a hero fold from something like the sixth best hand in slow play pocket fives. In the end, I settle on 5x his raise, hoping it's just low enough for a crime call. Mm -hmm. so both of you want to sit here? Well, I gotta keep the tables balanced. Oh. Who else? Oh come on, he's got the third best hand? Probably best I don't find out whether I could have just made an easy $517. Yeah, let's just move along and let the mystery be. Would you have called a shove? You yeah, shove? I mean, I got the boat. I was calling him whatever the I did. Yeah. Who leaves $517 on the table? Kid, oh. No. A bunch of limpers make me play a pedestrian 10-7, also known as my neighbor Brad's favorite hand. As far as flops go, that's not too shabby, but like I tell my neighbor Brad, by and large 10-7 brings you more trouble than glory. Like right now, there's a lot of promise, but I do only have bottom pair. Cutoff bets 11, button calls, and I have to call if only to teach Brad a lesson. The turn's a welcome sight, I check, cutoff bets 13, button calls, and I check raised at 50. Now I'm sitting here in a limped pot where everyone's got uncapped range, which means anyone could easily have queen 10. And like I always tell Brad, 10-7 can give you a good hand, but rarely the best hand. Luckily, neither opponent has queen 10 because neither re-raises, but they do both call. And now do I even want to see a flush on the river? Brad, I'm telling you, if this stupid favorite hand of yours goes south, or north, assuming one of these two had to have been chasing a flush, ideally the ace high flush, I need to lead big enough here for max value, but both players fold. And here I thought 10-7 was nothing to write home about. Dearest Bradford, this letter to you may well be my most bittersweet missive. The bitter, 
my most solemn regret for ever doubting you. The sweet, may the enclosed watercolor convey the resplendent reason for my rapture. Straight flushly yours, slow poker. I'm on the low jack with ace queen, raise to 20 over a limper, and get calls from three very loose players. The flop's nice, and after big blind checks, I bet about half pot and get two callers. The button in particular has been rather vocal about his goals. Please, baby Jesus, oh. let me make the vlog. I'll put in a good word at vlog church. But anyway, I figure one of these two has a flush draw, so I'd love to see a blank turn. No such luck. And I concur with Red Chip Poker that a third pot under bet here is preferable, but could also check evaluate given I've got two players behind. I opt for a check, as does the hijack, and button bets 125. On the one hand, this guy keeps repeating that he sat down at this table specifically to make the vlog. That he's gonna knock back a few drinks, he's gonna be splashy, he's gonna play any two, he's gonna bluff with air. And he's been delivering on those promises, having already gotten caught pulling a bunch of moves. On the other hand, I don't have the Ace of Diamonds, and if I was heads up, I'd probably call, but I could be dead here to one or both opponents. And although all signs point to BS, I decide to stay patient and pick a better spot. And the button is... demonstrative. What? Did I actually hit it or no? Yeah, I hit it. Of course I hit it. I want to be on the vlog. I'm not showing. You got a call. You got a call to see me. It's a bluff. <laughs> Is that on the vlog? Please, please put that on the vlog, man. I'm sucking dick over here to get on this vlog. Okay, first of all, you won't get on this vlog by sucking anyone's dick. There's actually a formal audition process, and not only is it entirely free of sucking, but I'd be happy to consider your application. As a courtesy though, I do need to confirm with the other poker vloggers that there's no conflict of interest. Let me just hop on the daily Zoom call for official clearance. Alright, you're good to go. Just bring your resume and headshot to the next hand, and good luck. I look down at 6-5 of clubs and facing a limp, I over limp and oh great, thanks for coming into the audition. If you could just call the flop right here from the button with any two cards, that'd be perfect. Wonderful, wonderful. We go four ways to a gorgeous flop. Two checks to me, I bet 15, and button, I'm gonna need you to call here with your obvious draw, okay? Fantastic. This is really promising so far. You're doing so great. After an irrelevant turn, I bet 50. Now button, listen close. Obviously the tension at this point in the scene is starting to escalate, so you need to show everyone in the room that you've got what it takes. The audience knows that you've only got a six or a ten, but if you want this job, I mean if you really need this job, you're gonna have to call. Atta boy. I am loving everything you brought to the table so far. Honestly, you're a natural. Alright, this river just paired the board, and I'm not worried in the least about a boat here. The quick flop and turn calls almost always mean a draw, and that draw just bricked out. And I know you'd fold to a $3 bet, so if you really want to make this vlog, I mean if you visualize yourself on the poker vlog red carpet thanking your family and your agent at the Golden Vlogs, then when I check here to induce, I'll need you to prove to everyone that you're not just some poker player, the kind of man to cowardly give up with 6 high or 10 high, but that you're ready to be a star. Alright, this is the moment of truth. You can do this. Give it everything you've got. I believe in you. 175. Oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, this one's going on the vlog. God damn it. I know, congratulations, you killed it. Welcome to the vlog. And you didn't even have to suck any dicks. All you had to do was ship me your chips. I've got 10s on the hijack, raise to 15, get calls from the cutoff and button, and then see a massive squeeze from the big blind for a buck 15. Pocket 10s are in that tricky zone, where against that sizing I'm either shoving or folding, so I go with a conservative fold. The cutoff shoves the rest of his short stack, and the button calls with any two, so at least I get to see how this would have played out had I been more of a gambler and shipped it. I've got sevens on the cutoff, but didn't get footage of my cards, so you'll just have to trust me and my card protector. The hijack raises to 15, I call, small blind 3 bets to 50, and hijack 4 bet shoves his remaining 97. His 4 bet is just a hair under 2x, which means I could call here given the action's closed and small blind can't shove over the top, but then I see small blind's tiny stack. Given the action so far, if I don't absolutely crush this flop, I'm just burning money. So yet again, I make a buy the book fold. I mean, I can't regret these disciplined folds every time. Let's reach out and grab it. Yeah! I've got queens on the button, and after a limp and a low jack raise to 15, my camera stops recording. But since I really wanted to share this moment on the vlog, I commissioned a filmmaker to produce this reenactment. I 3 bet to 45, low jack shoves, and I assume he's only doing this with aces, kings, or ace, king, so I fold what of course is the better hand. Mm. Yeah! Yeah! Opportunity knocks once, let's reach out and grab it. Facing one limp, I'm on the cutoff with, hey, you're back! I missed you guys so much, what happened last episode? That was so weird. Oh my God. What just happened? 
All right, we'll talk later. Right now, we've got work to do. The limper calls, and we're not going to shy away this time. Oh, top set. Well, that's not really much of a challenge. Limper checks, and before I can even so much as breathe on a chip, he speed mucks. But hey, we'll take it. I'm on the hijack with, fellas, we meet again. You were so distant last episode, and now you like won't leave. All right, let's raise to 15 and see a small blind call. Top set again? Okay. I bet he folds. You know, I'm just relieved your back pocket kings. The three of us, together again, we're unstoppable. I'm on the button and look down at, okay, now you're both kind of getting clingy, if I'm going to be honest. After three limps, cutoff raises to 22, and I three bet to 75. Small blind flats, and then a limper flats, because due to some savvy investing on his part, the value of his hand increased from $3 to $75 in 10 seconds. This table has been wild, and normally these flat calls would be surprising, but not here. Okay, boys, let's keep it rolling. The action's now on the initial raiser and the cutoff, and... I'm all in. He's all in. Okay. First off, let's take in the table talk. Yeah, slow poker. Long time! Definitely on the blow. Woo! He's got a decision to How make. How much, uh... This is a big moment. <laughs> Love the support, fellas. Please like and subscribe. Okay, back to the hand. Right off the bat, yes, I know, okay, I know. I can already hear the voice of every poker player that ever lived. There's no analysis here, just get it in. And I know I just said I'm done playing scared and making tight folds, but... I have to break this down, so please bear with me. Okay, let's start with all the reasons to fold. If any other player at this table made this move, it's an auto-shove. But this player in the cutoff, he's the only one playing the way I play. And he knows that I play like he plays. And that if I've got a hand like Queens, Kings, or Ace-King, he could put me in a tough spot. So it's one of those he knows that I know that he knows that I know situations. Limp, 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 raise, three bet, flat, limp, flat. If I'm in his shoes with rockets, I'm not four bet shoving, but I'm definitely four betting. And up against three opponents, including the tightest player at the table who just repopped with a healthy three bet, am I confident shoving with anything but aces? Probably not. Sure, I know I could make the chip count agnostic decision, but he does have the second highest stack at the table. If he had half that much, maybe i take a chance, but here I could go with my gut and lose 75, or go against my gut and lose it all. I've played a lot of poker hands. This can be ace king, but if I think back on all the hands I've played, and all the scenarios that resemble this one, more often than not, it's just aces. Okay, counterpoint. Let's review all the reasons to call. Never. Ever. Not once. Just never. Let's be real here, I'm not actually going to fold kings preflop. Any poker player would tell you, it's just not a thing we do. If it's a cooler, it's a cooler. That's just poker. After carefully weighing all these factors, it's time to make a decision. I take a deep breath, take a good hard look, and say goodbye. Small blind snap shoves, which means at least I'll know whether that was a well-reasoned hero fold, or if I'll have to write more lyrics for Muppets. Thank you. Ooh, <laughs> what a flop! Oh, no way! No way! Oh man! Wow! Wow! I just folded King's preflop, and was right. I folded kings. I folded kings. I folded kings. Mom, I folded kings. Hello, I folded kings. Is it terminal? <laughs> Alexa, I folded kings. Sorry, I'm having trouble understanding right now. Oh, okay, so there are three limbs to the cutoff. And as Dad's kings went to the muck, the others all said, what the f***? Hun, I folded kings. Why are there peanuts in the freezer? I folded kings. I folded kings! Are you okay? Uh, tell my family. I folded kings. You already did. You told everyone. Uh, and just remind them every couple weeks. And that'll do it for episode 6 of Slow Poker. It cost me $75 to fold kings, but a like and subscribe are free. Sorry, did I mention that I folded kings? I folded kings. Until next time, this has been Slow Poker. <laughs> it seems so easy.